Good morning, everyone. I'm Lauren, and this is your virtual tour with Sightseeing Italy brought to you by Tickets Awakening Weeks. So today we're going to be taking a whirlwind tour through Milano, Genoa, Turin, and Palermo. For those of you who don't know, Tickets Awakening Weeks is a six-week celebration of the reopening of museums and attractions in six countries around the world. The venues participating in Awakening Weeks have worked day and night to reimagine their experiences and introduce new hygiene measures to make it safe for you to visit them again. And they're also rolling out the welcome mat for those of us who aren't able to travel yet with online experiences just like this one. So before I hand over to our presenters for today, there are a couple of logistics I'm going to take care of. So if you have any questions for our presenters throughout the experience, you can submit them through the Q&A box in the lower section of the Zoom window. We're gonna have a Q&A at the end of the tour, so please feel free to send through your questions and we're gonna try and answer as many of them as possible at the end of the session. You can also vote up your favorite questions by giving them a thumbs up and that way we can ask the best questions first. Um, as many of you may have realized, this is a Zoom webinar, so your camera will not be on, but you can use the chat function to communicate with your fellow attendees as well as the speakers. You can share where you're joining us from or you can share your reactions during the session by using this chat. Make sure that when you do send a message, you select all panelists and attendees. It's the little blue box above the chat section when you're sending your messages so that all of us can see them. If you have any technical difficulties during the experience, you can use the chat to send a message just to all panelists and we'll try and help you out as soon as possible. And if you find you're having any trouble with the audio, just leave and rejoin. That's usually an easy fix. Finally, we're going to be recording this presentation and we'll be sending the recording to all of our registrants in the coming weeks. And so without further ado, we're going to head over to Milan with Mario and he's going to transport us to the world of Milan. Mario, please take it away. Hi Lauren, good morning everybody. Can you hear me? Are you good? All right, so first of all, I would like to introduce you to the visitor center. We are in Milan right now, so very beautiful city. Here's the visitor center. Let me just introduce it for a few seconds. Oh, here we go. So today we're going to take the sightseeing tour. So here's our stuff where you can actually buy your tickets and everything. We sell excursions as well in combination with sightseeing tour. Here's our leaflets here. And here are all the prices and all the information that you need to. Here's some excursions as well. And here's our shopping tours outlets. All the people can get very easily to their destination from here in our visitor center. Oh, thank you so much, Roberta. Here we go. We're very ready to get our tour by our first bus here. I want to introduce you our green bus. It's just like a full electric bus. We are the first company here in Milano that we have a full electric dual emission bus. Here we go. Here's all departures. Actually, this is our main stop for everything shopping outlet, and of course, the city side in the port. First of all, guys, security first. Hi. Good morning. Here we go. Sanitize first, and I would like to introduce you our Boss. So every day in Sanitary the, the boss, so you don't need to worry about that. We are it keeps all the uh, security here. Hello everybody. And here is our bus. So welcome guys. So just in a few seconds we we need to, to go. And I would love to introduce you how Milan is. So now, at the moment, we are in Cairoli Station. So we are very center at the main seat of Milano. We are just a few steps from the Sforza Castle because it's the symbol of Milan. And just five minutes walk from the Duomo Cathedral. Duomo is actually the main, the symbol of Milano. But that's all. So 
let's check it out. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to move. And as I told you, Milan is the, a very great city. Now we are in Caralia, just as I told you, this is actually one of the symbol of Milano, like the Duomo and the Sforza Castle that you're gonna see just in a few seconds. And actually Milan, it's a main city of Lombardy and a financial heart of Italy, which is located in the middle of the north part of Italy. It's very, uh, it's very easy to reach lakes, mountains, and seas as well. As I told you to my introduction, before we have a lot of excursions like the Lake Como tour, the Berlina Express, go to Switzerland, and of course to the scene of the King of Paris. Switzerland was fun because you can actually start the tour here in Milan. Wow, nice and green in the area. Of course, you can visit, of course, in Milan every here. I mean, all the season is very good, especially in the summer, because, you know, sun, heat, it's very exciting and exciting to go to the lakes as well. So this is actually one of the most uh, interesting parts. So as you can see here at the bottom, you can easily take your seat here, plug your headsets. We have like 13 languages where you can select so we have Italian, English, French, Russian, Spanish, Japanese. Uh, we have uh, German, Portuguese, Chinese, and for kids as well. So not just for only adults. And we introduced just last year, just uh, the uh, Milanese language. It's actually a dialect. Okay? It's a typical dialect here in Milan. It's quite defeating the, the language, but we, we are proud to introduce again here for the people. Here we go. So, so we have, this is the, the, uh, the line blue, the blue line. So we have four main uh, references for the sightings. So four lines. We have the A, that is the red, the central and historical part. The modern part, which is the B, the C is the sport line, and then the D is the yellow line. It's actually um, an historical in the part of Navigli. Navigli is actually um, a river, very famous river here in Milan. On the right side now, guys, I would like to introduce the park, the Sempione Park, which is part of our castle. So this was the garden of the, uh, the Sforza's family. Here you go, this beautiful castle. Here you go, on the right side of the castle. And you know what? Here is actually, uh, Starts all because one of the famous painters, sculpture here in Tyre of Italy, Leonardo da Vinci starts his works. So, what's the most famous that um, uh, Leonardo da Vinci made here in Italy, here in Milano? The Last Supper. Last Supper, you can easily take our bus just for three stops and you can easily go inside and eat the last supper of the night of the village. Here you go, this is a beautiful inside, the left side of the uh, castle. And we just start to work with Ludovico il Moro, who is the Duke of Milan. He's got a very good fountain over there. Now we are going to the center, actually, um, of Milano, the, uh, the modern part. So because I wanna wanna introduce you as well. Okay. 
ancora tre minuti, Maria di Castello. I know, guys, there's a lot of peace to see here in Milano. I, we just have like 10, 15 minutes to see, but I would love to wait to you here. And I, it will be my pleasure to have you here in our, in our city. And I'll wait for you in the visitor center. And last spot for this few minutes here. Oops. Just in front of you, the idol. Here's our. Giuseppe Garibaldi is actually the national hero of Inter Italy. And if you can see, just in front of him, there is the way to go to the Duomo Cathedral. That's called Via Dante. Here on the left side, the castle. Here we go. So just in a few seconds, I'll show you. This is actually the biggest pedestrian lane in the entire Europe. Uh, it starts actually from Via Dante. This is the street we just in front of us. It takes you there to San Babla. About six kilometers an hour. Six kilometers an hour. So it's just like two and a half kilometers walking. It's actually a shopping district. It's, it's actually a modernity, anxiety, and everything else, the culture here. And there's, I told you, there's a lot of things to see, but we don't have enough time. And I would love to wait for you here. I hope to see you here just in our visitor center and our sighting. And I hope to, um, to see you here, guys. Thank you so much for everything, for this wonderful a beautiful tour guide. Thank you very much, Mario. That was a lovely tour of Milan. We're now going to hop over to Genoa with our guide, Paolo. So Paolo, please take it away. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Genoa. Let me spend very few words about the city, first of all, because most of the people doesn't know where Genoa is located basically. So first of all, our city is located in the northwest of Italy, quite close to Milan actually, around roughly 100 kilometers from here to Milan and 200 kilometers from here to, to Nice, to the Porto Zoo. And we are also very, very close to Porto Pino, which is a very well-known uh, location, especially for our American tourists and American friends. We are now approaching our bus terminal, our stop number one, which will be behind me in a few minutes. So we will also be able to unique and amazing uh, uh, promenade. Sorry. In the Cositalo, we have Pocadasse, which is again a, a place, a well known place for, uh, for, for Americans and for UK tourists, especially. So these are the two lines we offer the same ticket. Our tickets are valid for 24 or 48 hours. So depending on how long are you wish are you, you wish to stay in, in Jena, you can use the 24 hours or the 48 hours ticket. We have a very new brand new commentary in eight language. We offer you the free handset So you can uh, you can use our headset and listen to the commentary for the whole tour. And we also have very convenient stop, so no matter how you reach Genoa, if you reach Genoa, most of our tourists reach Genoa usually by boat, by cruise line. It's our main market, apart from this year. If you come to Genoa by boat, once you are off the, the cruise terminal, very few steps ahead, you can find our stop. So it's very, very, very convenient for you. You just need to cross the road, basically, meet our unicorn staff by the people, and then you can board for this, for both lines, for the both routes. If you come in Genoa by train, we have two stops in both railway stations. So it's very, very easy. You can start, uh, it's one, one thing, very important thing that nobody knows, most of the people don't know, is that you can start our journey from any of our stops. So 
Our WhatsApp number one is our terminal where we are arrived right now. But you can start your tour from any of our stops. So if you stay in a hotel or you come by train or whatever you, you do, or no matter how you come together, you can start your, your journey from any of our stops. Now we are arrived at stop number one. So the camera woman will follow me. We show you some of the attractions in uh, in Vienna. This is our bus. We are getting off right now. Excuse me. There we go. These are our customers, new customers coming on board today. And there we go. So this is our terminal. Where are you? This is our terminal. This is our on our right. Come with me. We we'll show you some 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 other oh, just behind just, just there that you see just in front of you in the front of the camera at the moment is the historic city center of Genoa. The beginning the border of the historic city center of Genoa, which is one of the largest uh, historic city center in Europe and is so also uh, UNESCO heritage since uh, the historic city center. We have all this, uh, this pedestrian area where we have the aquarium, the entrance of the aquarium in front of me. On the left, we have all the ferry boats connecting the city to Portofino. As I told you before, in about uh, four an hour, approximately, you can reach Portofino by boat. And maybe next year you will have the opportunity to visit Portofino with a special new bus that we will offer to our guests. And here we go. In this side, we have this wood ship, which is uh, the Galeone. The Galeone, which is uh, the ship you build. And on the left, uh, you maybe can you can spot a cruise ship. So as you, as I told you before, this is one of the cruise ships at the moment berth in Genoa. And okay, okay, go ahead. So let's go ahead. Let's go back to the bus. And let's talk again about our service. Do I, I tell you about the, the the lines already? I tell you about the stops. So what we offer on board the bus? On board our bus, we offer apart from the double deck, of course. We offer the commentary, as I told you before, in eight languages. So for the next year, we will have also Chinese, Portuguese. So a lot of languages are, are available on board our bus. We have the air condition downstairs. But of course, best views are always on the top. So I do suggest to go always on the top of the bus to, to have the best views of Genoa. Uh, we also offer you tickets for the attraction so if you wish to visit some museum if you wish to take some uh, elevator because just behind us we have a lot of mountains reachable by elevator by lift for example in our stop hour nine we have a public lift that bring you up to a hill where there is a sort of a balcony very large balcony from which you have a fantastic view of the city very very famous place so and we also we do we do sell tickets also for this kind of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of main of main of transportation let's say. Then we offer tickets for the lighthouse, which is one of the oldest lighthouses in uh, Europe. And uh, we offer also okay. And then on board our bus we have also always an assistance. This is a something you couldn't find in any other place in Europe. All, only in Italy we have an assistance on board. So in case of any need during your, your, your tour, during your, your, your trip, you can ask any question to our uh, uniform staff and they can help you and tell you, uh, give you all the information you, you may need. We do offer a bottle of water during the summer, included in the price. Our price is very, very, very cheap. We have no competitor in, in Italy and in Europe. We are very cheap and we offer quite a good service, according to me. We have a frequency of a bus uh, of now, but usually during the, the, the summer, we have a bus every 10 minutes, approximately. So from one bus to the other, basically you have just to wait 10 minutes. So not, not, a, not, not a long stay. What I'm not sure you know, everyone knows is the meaning of hop on hop off as you can see maybe it's written in our bus over there just at the end of the side hop on hop off is our formula and means basically that you can use the bus seat 
as long as you want, as long as you wish, for the entire validity of the ticket. Basically, if you buy the 24 hour ticket, you can use for the main for, for a whole tour without getting off. But the, the best thing to our service is that you can get on and get off at any of our stop, do your visit, go shopping, go eating, do whatever you want, go back to the to the our bus stop and in 10, 15 minutes you will find another bus to get it on again and continue your journey around uh, around our tour. So this is something that not all the people know when they buy they buy the ticket. So this is very convenient because you can also use the bus not only to make a tour or to visit something from the top, but also use the bus as a, as a, a mean of uh, mean of transportation, like a public bus. Once you have the ticket, you can use also to move from one part uh, one part of the city and uh, and the other basically. Uh, what else? Here we go. Let's go to see Palazzo San Giorgio, which is in front of us. So the area we are reaching is a pedestrian area, as I told you before. On our left, right here, there is the historic city center. And unfortunately, it's a little bit far away from here, but behind us, there is the cathedral, and we're in the cathedral which is reachable basically from our stop number three. Hello, can you hear me? Office of the Maritime Authority. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, Paolo, we're going to have to move over on to our next... You. We're going to have to move on to our next um, Italian tour. So thank you very, very much for showing us around Genoa. Okay. That was a real treat. We really thank enjoyed you it. To you. Thanks very much, Paolo. Thank you to you. Hope to see you in Genoa. Bye-bye, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much to Paolo. I'm just going to see if we're ready for our tour and tour. Um, yes, it looks like we are. So we're going to hop over to Turin. Hi, hey everybody. We are here at the terminal in Piazza Castello. So you can see, I will show you now our ticket office. I will turn around the camera, maybe. So, hi, my name is Arianna and uh, I will be your guide uh, for this tour today. This is our bus. We, here you can already catch a glimpse of the beautiful city of Turin. We are in Piazza Castello, which is the very city center of the city. So we are going on board. As you can see, we are respecting all the safety measures to guarantee uh, safe travel. So follow me, please. So, Okay, we all wear the mask, we have our hand sanitizers, and I also introduce you to our hostess on board, which is Paola, so hi Paola, and uh, over there we have our driver, Antonio, They will drive us around. So, what about uh, Torino, city sightseeing? First of all, where is Torino? We are in the northwest of Italy, so we are about two hours from Milan, two hours from, from uh, Genoa. Uh, this is the line A. Usually we have four lines that will guide you through the highlights of the city. We are going upstairs in the meanwhile, so I'll just take this one. I was telling you we have four lines. Uh, we drive you to the Juventus Stadium and Museum, to the Royal Palace of Venaria, uh, to the modern part of the city. But right now we are on line A, which will guide you to the wonders of the historic uh, center of the city, as you can already see. And we will drive you to royal residences, to baroque buildings, to churches such as the Duomo Cathedral, where the holy shroud is kept. And what else? Uh, we also go to the green side of uh, Turin. So we get you to the Valentino Park. We have a stop there. And the most beautiful part, uh, according to me, is the hills. So we will have this very special uh, position up the hill. This, and thanks to the bus, it's, thanks to our double-decker double bus, so we will get this very privileged point of view to be up over there. So. What about Torino? Let's talk a bit about uh, Torino. Uh, when we ask about, when we ask tourists uh, uh, what they think of Turin, one of the things they say us is that it's surprisingly beautiful. 
uh, if I don't know if you know that Turin dates back to the Roman period, you can still see Roman remains uh, uh, here in the very center of the city. And then the maximum splendor of Turin was uh, um, in 1861 because it was the first capital of Italy. Yeah, so the Kingdom of Italy was unified and Turin was the capital. And that's when it was transformed. So between the 16th and 18th century, the elegant city that you can see right now was created thanks to very important architects, eh? such as Filippo Iubarra or Guarino Guarini. All the squares, gardens, castles were built and the in a predominant Baroque style. So we are a very, a truly Baroque city. But we are also a mix of different uh, architectural styles you will see. For example, we are driving out through Via Po. You see these clear buildings, uh, very wide streets. So that's what we will see a lot in the city center. Uh, now we are driving also to, uh, we will get into a big uh, square, Piazza Vittorio Square, which is the biggest portico square in Italy. Uh, in Europe, sorry, not only Italy, but also, <laughs> but also Europe. <laughs> I will let you enjoy a bit of the, of the view. We will see better later. Uh, we also, uh, we have uh, uh, eight languages on board. I will show you, but we also have a treat. We have a special guide. It is for children. So it's funnier, easier for children, both in English and Italian here on line A. So that's a class that I think it's really interesting for families as well. Um, then, Turin. Turin is also uh, a lot more. So, uh, as I told you, we have a green side of the city. Um, the stop at the Valentino Park will allow you to discover the, um, uh, the, the grass. You can have a, a walk to the park, have a picnic, so you can also choose to do that. Uh, so not only architecture, but also nature, lots of nature. Now, um, as you can see, um, over there in the um, far distance, we have the hills, the hills of Turin. Uh, Turin is the, considered the greenest city in Italy. So thanks to the Po River, uh, the hills over there extend for over 28 miles. So that's a very a huge, <laughs> lots of green. We have many uh, lime tree, with trees, many streets, uh, uh, with many trees, and that's also another uh, great thing to discover in, uh, in Torino. We are almost entering the Piazza Vittorio Veneto. Uh, and the, uh, the symbol of the city, our landmark, which is the Mole Antonelliana. It's a big tower. Uh, it was meant to be a synagogue and it's uh, 550 feet uh, high, which is uh, 168 meters. We have inside Montenegro, the National Museum of Cinema, and also a panoramic lift that will get you up the top. But don't worry about it because in a few minutes we will have a perfect view of the city and of the Mole Antonelliana as well when we will be up the hill. So, so we walk a little bit. Behind, of course, this is. Uh, I am standing, but we don't. You don't have to stand on our buses at the top floor. But it is a special event, so just for you, I'm <laughs> holding very strong. Okay, so now uh, we will turn a little bit to our left, and we will start seeing the Mona Antonelliana, as I told you, the symbol of the city, which will be over there. And this is Piazza Vittorio, so this is uh, beautiful. Today the, the weather is a bit gray, but I think that the, the white buildings also are enhanced by this light. So uh, it's not sunny, but it's not bad at all. I think that Turin is beautiful as well. And you can see the Mole Antonelliana over there. That's it. And we'll see it back better in a minute. Okay. We talked about culture, we talked about architecture, but Turin is also a lot more. For example, it's a major European crossroad for industry. I don't know if you know, but Turin is the home of the automotive industry. We have the headquarters of Fiat here. Not only that, but it's also the capital 
of contemporary art. We have a very important art galleries, very important events about contemporary art, and also the capital of design. So there is a lot, a lot to discover about the city. During the, the Savoy, um, during the Savoy reign, uh, where many royal residences were also built uh, here, uh, thanks to the House of Savoy influence and the, the French influence. You can see one of these residences over there up the hill, that's the Basilica di Superga. It's far in the distance, I don't know if you can catch a glimpse of that. That was uh, designed by Filippo Juvarra. All these royal residences are a wonder to discover and to visit. Uh, both in the city centre, so at a walking distance, but taking our city citizen buses to, that will let you discover them and visit them. And they are all uh, um, inscribed in the World Heritage List, so that's a proof of the ground of, of, <laughs> of these residences. This is one of my favourite spots on the river. This is particularly beautiful during sunset, so make sure you take a tour uh, at six o'clock because it is amazing. Up the hill, you see the church, Santa Maria al Monte or Monte dei Cappuccini. In front of us, the Grandmadre. Now Paola will show you. You see neoclassical styles, so we don't have just Baroque, but many styles. So we are also uh, many uh, buildings in Art Nouveau style that you can see on our line. Okay, you can see the church here. That's amazing. So, so, such, so much background culture, background history, of course, Turin hosts a very important museums and art galleries. We will take you to lots of them, thanks to our tour, thanks to our, to our lines. And you can also buy tickets in advance with us. So, you just uh, take a ticket, you don't need booking, you can skip the line. We just drop you off to the museums and you can enjoy your visit and be absolutely, and enjoy your, uh, your holiday. For example, we can sell you tickets for the cinema museum, the National Museum of Cinema and the panoramic lift inside the Mola Antonelliana, I told you before. You can buy tickets for the Museo Egizio, which as you know, is the mo one of the most important in the world or the Automobile Museum, uh, which is on our line, line B, and also the Venaria Royal Palace, for example, which is one of the pieces that you will find, you will find uh, very close to the city. And we have the green line that will get you easily there. Okay, now we are going up the hill, so uh, the perfect postcard of Turin. If you imagine Turin, if you see Turin, in guidebooks, in postcards, you will see a picture of what we are going to see in a few minutes, which will be a wonderful view of the city from, uh, from here, from up above. Okay, we are going now uh, up and uh, we are in Villa della Regina. So, as I told you, Turin is a like very green city, so you won't see from here Villa della Regina because <laughs> the trees are very imposing. But uh, over there, there is another one of these uh, royal residences, Villa della Regina, which has beautiful gardens uh, and it's uh, truly a jewel you have to visit. Uh, it's a stop number three for uh, our line. This is line A, the red line. So make sure you, you pay a visit to that. What more? I could talk for hours actually. I know I have to be brief, but there are so many reasons to visit Turin and do it with our bus because we give you the perfect way to discover the city and to plan your visit. So you don't, know, you don't lose time. You know exactly where you want to go, where you can hop on, hop off, and, and that's, uh, that's great. So uh, we have to add one more reason to be here in Turin, the events. We have uh, so many events, uh, festivals, uh, very important fairs. Uh, we can um, talk about some of them, such as uh, uh, Terra Madre Salon de Gusto, that's the, uh, the largest uh, festival about food, about slow food, uh, which happens in autumn. So we are almost ready. <laughs> you, are, you are perfectly on time to, be, to see it. Another uh, very important fair is Artissima. It's the most important contemporary art fair in Italy. Uh, as I told you, Italy is considered uh, the, the capital of contemporary art. 
And, oh, and then we have uh, the, the, um, the National Book Fair, which is also pretty important. And another event that I'll, I'll leave you last because it's very special, but right now we enjoy the look, the, the view of the city from up above. You have to take a leap of faith right now because behind the mole there are the mountains, the Alps. Today, unfortunately, we have clouds, you can see it. But actually that's intentional. We put there the clouds, so we didn't spoil too much the panorama, the view. You have to come, you have to see with your eyes what's there. We just uh, yeah, hid the mountains for today, so you have to come and see. Of course, the mountains were also the setting of the uh, 2006 Olympic Games, Winter Olympic Games that happened here in Turin as have been uh, a, an amazing event. I was talking about events and one more very event that you can um, enjoy on our bus is Luci d'Artista, lights in the bus, which uh, uh, it's some lightnings. The, the city is illuminated with these works of art conceived by contemporary artists in uh, autumn winter. So it culminates uh, during the Christmas holidays. We have a very professionally describe all these works of art. So just imagine being here on the roof on the Lecker bus and being um, driving through these lights that you see above your head. For example, the Monte di Cappuccini hosts one of these lights. Uh, and you can uh, relish in the Christmas spirit. So you can already book this, uh, this tour on our website, the website is in Italy. So make sure you, you, you come and, and, and do it because it's, uh, it's really, truly amazing. So uh, our time is almost over, but uh, we are still up the hill. So we'll let you enjoy the villas that you can see up there. As I told you, another style which is really predominant in the city is uh, Art Nouveau. Um, I hope that we have time to get there because here there will be a villa, which is called the Villa Scott which is the perfect representation of Art Nouveau style. And it was also the setting of a, a movie, of a movie by Dario Argento, which is the king of uh, horror movies in Italy. I don't know if you ever heard about him. He's very famous also worldwide. And that's uh, Villa Scott. You will see it uh, in a minute uh, on the left. In a second, actually, not a minute on the left. And there it is. So I think with this beautiful, image we are we are going to to say goodbye so i hope you you enjoyed this uh, very short tour and we convinced you to come and visit uh, torino um what well um i think we are in a in a minute passing the word to the line to palermo and we can still see Ariana, thank position. you so much for this wonderful tour. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you very, very much for this wonderful tour. Yeah, Ariana. we really you. enjoyed it. Thanks. Thanks, Lauren. Bye. Bye bye. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Palermo, our beautiful city. Now we are in Piazza Verdi, one of the major sites of the city. And behind me, you can admire Massimo Theatre, which is one of the most representative jewels of Palermo, the biggest opera house in Italy and one of the largest in Europe. Theatre, with its imposing Art Nouveau facade, was inspired by Greek temples and classical style buildings. In addition to that, the theatre, thanks also to its proud and elegant appearance given by two huge bronze statues representing two lions on either side of the staircase dominate the entire Piazza Verdi. Via Macheda, one of Palermo's major city road, starts from here, from Piazza Verdi. It has been built at the end of 1500 by the Spanish noble de Cardenas, who set the urban structure of the city forever, dividing it into four historic districts of the city. Today, Via Macheda is a pedestrian street dedicated to shopping, enriched by colorful and friendly fast food restaurants and cafes. Founded by the Phoenician in the 8th century before Christ and called Ziz, the mint flower, it has been over the centuries a crossroad of endless culture. 
Roman, Byzantine, Greek, Arab, Norman, Spanish, Italian, they all fought to conquer the city because of its lucky position in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Our city is one of the favorite destinations all over the south of Italy, thanks also to the perfect combination of sea and art. As a matter of a fact, in any way you decide to reach us, by plane, by ship or by car, you can admire the beautiful northern coast of our island, watered by an amazing blue sea. The deep bond between the sea and the city is also given by the meaning of word Palermo or Panormus as Greek call it, that means all ports. The marina we reached now, called La Cala, was built in the original bay that the Phoenician chose as a safe harbor for their ships. Local people love to come to this promenade that we're looking at right now for a walk or for jogging. Important noble families chose to build their palace here to enjoy this wonderful view. The mountain that stands out from the sea is called Pellegrino. For the local people, it is not only a wonderful place for its natural beauty, it is sake for their faith. It is the fortress that has always protected and defended the city. During the Muslim domination, Monte Pellegrino became the center of religious life. As a matter of fact, at that time, Many of the caves in the mountain were transformed into real houses by hermit monks. Palermo is a city with a thousand faces. Walking through the street is like being in an art history book. An open air museum where architectural styles and eras mix and overlap at every street corner. We can admire Arab Norman residents, Baroque churches, neoclassical theaters, Punic walls, Al Nuovo villas, historical markets, archaeological sites and natural areas. The magnificent Porta Felice, one of the city walls, introduced us into the heart of Palermo, letting us admire the Cassaro, a part of a long avenue called Corso Vittorio Emanuele that connects the sea with Moreale, a charming little town that owns a treasure, an amazing Norman cathedral. The cathedrals of Moreale and Cefalù, the Norman Palace and its Palatine Chapel in Palermo, are some of the wonders of the Arab Norman Palermo 
listed by UNESCO as World Heritage in 2015. These buildings are the results of a combination of different architectural and artistic tradition, Byzantine, Islam, and Western. The city has also been elected the Italian capital of culture for 2018. Another reason to come visit our city is, of course, food. From Cannoli to Arancina, Palermo is world famous for its delicious street food culture. You'll be overwhelmed by just how varied and diverse Sicily's cuisine is, and it is possible to taste it in many corners of the city, especially in the open markets like Capo, Vuceria or Ballaro, that reminds us of Arab souk, where vendors shout and scream to attract customers. Palazzo Reale, or Norman Palace, is the oldest royal residence in Europe. It's one of the best examples of Arab Norman art in the city. Once the seat of the kings of Sicily during the Norman domination, now it became the headquarter of the regional parliament. Inside of it, Roger II built a magnificent chapel called Cappella Palatina, Palatine Chapel, a truly unique place. The chapel is the result of a vision of peace and brotherhood, synthesis of the union of three religious cults, Islamic, Christian and Byzantine. We de Maupassant, a 19th century French author, during his visits in Palermo in 1885, defined it the most beautiful church in the world, the most amazing religious jewel dreamt by human thoughts. The Cathedral of Palermo, one of the oldest church of the city, is dedicated to the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. The main characteristic of this beautiful church is the presence of many different styles due to the various conquering nations and empires that have had a presence in Palermo. Built in 1185, it has been a church, a crypt and a mosque. With our buses, you can admire all the points of interest of the city. Its ancient parts, its gardens, its villas, and also reach the town of Moreale and the wonderful seaside little city of Mondello, once a fishing village. The mild climate Sicily has for almost the entire year makes it a pleasant destination in any season. We could have told you much and much more about our city culture and traditions. With us and with our daily upon of service, you can stop and admire the architectural beauties and experience the city in complete freedom. You can upon and off as many times as you like aboard our open-top double-decker buses.
We are waiting for you in Palermo. To better see the tours we offer and the timetables of our buses, please visit our site www.citysighting.it. Grazie. I hope that you enjoyed seeing Milan, Turin and Genoa. Um, so we have a couple of questions and we're just going to quickly get through those. So we have one from Mai and she would like to know how many days do we need to visit all of the cities in this tour, um, Milan, Turin, Genoa and Palermo. So um, I'm not sure which of you would like to answer this question. Maybe Andrea, if you're still, oh, sorry, Mario, if you're still on the line and you'd like to answer. Hi, so this is Torino. Thank <laughs> you very much. Word. <laughs> Thank you, Ariana. So, I'd be happy for you to answer that question. <laughs> so when I, the, okay, you would need many days. I think the first, for the first time, I think the three days would be enough just to, you know, see the main highlights of the city. But then also a week, because if you want to take a tour of all the royal residency that you see not only in the city center, but also in the surrounding, the surroundings of the city, it could also, also take one week. But I think the first three days is fine. And then if you, have, uh, if you have time, one week would be perfect. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Ariana. I appreciate that. The next question that we have is, for, um, is specifically for Milan. So Mario, are you there? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, Echo. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So one yes, of our attendees would like to know what the most iconic sites in Milan are besides the cathedral. Yeah, uh, well, as I told you in the uh, presentation, Milan is actually um, a very complicated and a mix of uh, cultures. So we have modernity and science and all. And we have the Sforza Castle and the Duomo Cathedral and the Last Supper. The Last Supper is actually the most uh, interesting part of the, uh, uh, the person who visit because they want to see the Last Supper of Leonardo da Vinci. I think this is the most uh, uh, interesting part. Perfect. Thank you very much, and uh, Mario. Yeah, thank you so much. So it looks like those are all the questions that we had. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us. Thank you very much for your patience when we had a few connection troubles. Um, as you all know, this experience was part of Tickets Awakening Weeks, and we're nearly through with our um, Awakening Week in Italy. So please feel free to join for our last couple of experiences. Next week, we'll be going to the US and we'll be celebrating Awakening Weeks there. And we look forward to seeing a lot of you in those virtual experiences as well. If you have any, if you would like to know more about Tickets Awakening Weeks, we encourage you to go and have a look on our website, um, www.tickets.com forward slash blog forward slash awakening dash weeks. And you can find out how you can experience Awakening Weeks in person there as well. Thank you very much for joining. To all of our hosts, thank you very much for doing the best job that you could under the circumstances. And we'll see you all soon. Bye, everyone.